All right, we are live on this special spoiler-filled podcast of Cast It to the King. I am your host, Joshua Mickle. And as I get this up and rolling right here, is this the right one? No, that's not the right one. It's it's going to be this one right here. All right, there's my graphics. And let me bring in our fellow guest. We have my father, Jack Mickle, my brother for the first time, Noah Mickle, and my future brother-in-law, Keith Hammer Jones. <laughs> How are you fellas doing today? Doing good, man. Doing great. Right. All right, so we are going to get right into this here with this particular episode. And as the title suggested, uh, this is a spoiler-filled mm-hmm. review. No no bars hold back on this one. And if you have not seen the movie, be warned. It's going to be <laughs> filled with all sorts of goody goodness. And we are going to keep it PG-13, unlike our... Unlike, unlike the movie itself being rated R. There is one thing we are going to kick off uh, this particular segment today that we will be talking about, and that is the recent Comic-Con news that Avengers 5 has its own title again, renamed from Kang Dynasty to now Doomsday, Avengers Doomsday, and they have announced the actor playing Victor Von Doom to be none other than than one Robert Downey Jr. coming back into the Marvel fold, but as a different character. And I'll switch it over, and I will start with uh, my brother Noah on this. On what, And the question is, what do you think of the casting of RDJ as Doctor Doom? Do you think it's going to be a brand new character? Is he an Iron Man variant or Tony Stark variant? Or what do you think of this whole thing? Uh, I'm not quite sure how to feel because I see, like most people, see him as Iron Man and Tony Stark. So it's gonna be. I don't think he's coming back as Iron Man, like a variant. But I'm still gonna, even if it's just having him play a completely different character. I guess feels weird. All right, uh, Keith, what do you think? I'm 50-50. I actually do think he's going to be a variant of Tony Stark. I think he kind of gave us a hint with that when he said uh, new mask, same task. I think he gave us a little hint uh, to that. Um, Unless he was just throwing that out there to confuse people. But I do think he's going to be a variant of Tony Stark. um, But it should should be interesting. We'll see how they they go with it. I feel like we're in a recovery phase for, for Marvel right now. So. All right, so uh, uh, before I kick it over to you, Dad, uh, what makes you believe this is going to be a Tony Stark variant uh, Doom character? Because I feel like they're going to, kind of like how in this movie, not to jump ahead with the Deadpool, but like how they search through the time for a different Wolverine, they're going to search for an Iron Man, and they're going to think they found him, and it's not going to be not going to be Tony Stark as they expect should say so okay prediction. that's int- i've never i've ne- I never heard that theory thrown out there that's an interesting theory uh kind of like right. how, i'm not gonna say specifically quite yet but how when he go uh, when deadpool goes on his jumping journey at first he runs into someone else mm-hmm. yep <laughs> exactly all right dad what do you think of the casting is it brilliant is it do you would you rather have someone else? What what's your whole feel about it when you hear the announcement? Well, first I think I think Keith uh, he stole my thunder on all that. I one hundred. <laughs> huh? What'd you say? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, y'all started laughing in the middle of my thing. Oh. I agree with Keith one hundred percent. I I believe it is going to be like going through the multiverse, finding Tony Stark. Is it brilliant? Yeah, I mean, I love Robert Downey Jr. I'd watch him, you know, do almost any role. Uh, I think he's a great actor, and he brings a lot to the MCU. Uh, but on the other hand, you kind of wonder if they're bringing back Rob, uh, RDJ, or is it because everything else is kind of failing? You know, because we have to look at the MCU right now. It's not exactly been burning up the charts. Uh, so, you know, but I, I think it would be, it's incredibly intriguing to bring him back as someone who is relatable but on a different level he's like on a bad guy kind of thing so yeah i think that would put butts in seats in the theaters 
Definitely. Uh, I just hope it's not one of those grasping at straws, trying to recapture magic, because uh, that's kind of kind of like what it feels. Um, <clears throat> if I were a writer, I would prefer someone else uh, to do that character. And I know we've talked about it before with the uh, guy who uh, did Oppenheimer. What's his name? Uh, that character, that guy, that actor. Killian Murphy. Yeah. Yeah, I think he would have made a, an excellent choice. I think a lot of people could have done that role. Uh, but R.E.J. brings brings the chutzpah to it, and I mean, it's going to be, uh, if you want a blockbuster, that's one way to do it, is uh, put him in that role. I think my personal take on this is that the, you either way, if it was Robert mm -hmm. Downey or Murphy or whoever you cast that's a competent, good actor out there, if you were to say Matthew McConaughey was Victor Von Doom, like it, like honestly, if you had a, like a really good enough actor to play the role, people are still gonna come and fill their butts and seats because one, it's an Avengers movie. We haven't had one since 2019. It's a character that many fans have long awaited to be done right in this universe, and it's. Like Infinity War, it's going to be capturing a great comic run going into a great storyline that uh, a lot of fans envy, which is Secret Wars, which is going to lead up into. My personal thoughts about Robert Downey Jr., uh, I do not think he's going to be a Iron Man variant. I think he's going to be flat out Victor Von Doom, like we saw uh, in the Deadpool movie. Uh, we've seen... And also, in all these other Marvel Cinematic Universe films, this will not be the first time we see one actor don a different character, a different role in this universe. Not a lot of people remember Captain Marvel, but there is a character who, a particular actress, I forget her name, she plays a blue-skinned alien character that works with Captain Marvel, and then she is later the lead uh, and the Eternals in that movie. Uh, so you have her. Nathan Fillion, who we will get into with Deadpool and Wolverine, has now played a con combined total four different characters in this universe. Four. Count them four different characters in this universe now. And so we my have only issue with that is how how when they when when, when Thor and Captain America, because I'm sure he's going to come back too <laughs> if this trend continues. I mean, all these people. Thor's already Dr. back, Doom, though. He's RBJ. not like it's not like are he's dead. Are they not going to say, "Hey, you look familiar"? I yeah. mean, are they? Uh, are we as the as the as the fans supposed to buy that they don't recognize him? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, that's a hurdle. I think they're going to have to tackle one way or another. But for those that don't know about Doom, he doesn't wear the mask just to look menacing. He wears it. Because his face has some, it depends on what version of the comics you read, either from the origins of the Fantastic Four it happens or the mystical side of him becoming like the evil Doctor Strange-isms of it where his, like no matter what version you read, his face becomes very decrepit and mutilated in a way that's worse than Wade Wilson's of Deadpool. So... I would say 95, 98% of the time, he is not going to be wearing a mask. I mean, he is going to be wearing that helmet, that mask. And his voice is going to be modulated in post to where it, he sounds like, like, yes, that sounds like doom right there. Like, he sounds so menacing and so robotic in a way. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a, a case where if they do show his face, it's going to be of one of, it, it's probably going to be like, you want to see the face? And then he rips off the mask of like, this is the torture I've lived with. And it's going to show like massive makeup, like skin, pr like maybe don't get too graphic with it. I mean, um, it's PG. I mean, you can get away with a lot with PG-13. So, I mean, Deadpool's face is, is PG-13 friendly in terms of ratings. Uh, I would say up that alley, like if they were to reveal, like do like a face reveal. If they do tackle a secret wars arc in one of the older comics is that when he gets the beyonders powers he like his face is all healed and it's all fixed and it was actually alluded in one of the old spider-man uh 
cartoon series when they tackled the Secret Wars arc with Doctor Doom in it, and they showed his face all beautiful and fixed up, and everyone shocked and surprised. Give RDJ a little bit longer hair on the top and give him a clean shave. He looks nothing like Tony Stark in the movies. That's I mean that's all I have to say in terms of like, hey, you look like so and so. I'm like. And yeah, that you can easily explain that away. But uh, tell me if tell. So one more thing before we get, go into Deadpool and Wolverine. For all three of you, for all three of you, how do you think Avengers Doomsday should open up? In terms of like when Thanos was introduced in Infinity War, we see him destroying half of the Asgardian population, like throwing stuff down, takes out the Hulk and kills Loki. Like you set up the premise of like, yeah, this dude is bad business. My theory is that the first opening minutes of the Avengers Doomsday is going to be, you see Kang recast and then you see Dr. Doom roll up in there taking on the council and all of those kings. He'll take on the kings first somehow, and then he'll focus his attention on the council of kings, tear them apart, and then off in the distance, like he'll walk away, like like the camera will pan to him walking away or turning towards the camera, like signaling whatever the kings dynasty mission was for conquering, no pun intended, Whatever it was for conquering the multiverse, now Doctor Doom now takes on that mantle, and then you cue the title card, Avengers Doomsday, and then we pick up wherever multiverse or character we focus on a movie. So, what do you think of what do you think of that, or do you think it opens up a different way? I'll start with I'll, right. I'll start with you, Keith. I, I like that opening. That actually sounds really cool. Um, the thing is, so are we going to see the recast of King before that? Are we going to? That's what we've heard before this okay. weekend happens. That they were in the process of recasting King, and that was actually one of the rumors. Are they going to announce the new actor for King? It's going to happen. Yeah, I would say they would have to to like. I mean, because obviously, if they didn't know who that was, it wouldn't hit as hard. Um, but I like that opening because then you, like you said, you kind of you kind of get the power aspect of it. And you see that this guy's this guy means business, and uh, we're gonna need some help going against this person. All right, Noah, what do you think? Uh, I like I do like your thing. I would say, excuse me, I haven't seen the last Ant Man movie, so I don't. I've only seen a few clips about the council meeting at the very end. That's about all I know about the movie. They just give you. They essentially just give you a visual of like there are so many millions of yeah, variants of Kings, 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 and then you have the Council of Kings. All the King variants because of the at the end of season one Loki. I still haven't seen season two. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I'm behind <laughs> on a lot of Marvel stuff. All right. Well, that's um, not. Yeah, that's m- not much of a. Uh, thing going into it uh dad what do you think or do you think there should be a different opening to Why set you up the threat? A different question than everybody else i think um <laughs> i think that it, it opens up with him snapping with the glove at the end of end game and then it fades <laughs> to black and then it comes back to him being resurrected somehow by some powerful force and because of everything he went through he doesn't want anyone else to go through it so he dons the mask of uh Doctor Doom, in order to save the world and future generations from having to pay the price that they had to pay. Wait, are you saying this is supposed to be Iron Man come back from the dead? He's not Iron Man. Tony Stark come back somehow, some way, either from a nolly, another. I don't know. I don't know. That's just my thing. I think that if you're going to have fans buy that, that's it's got to be Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's gotta be. It no, it's not. I don't think so. You can't be going by anybody else's name. Hey, this is John Smith as Doctor <laughs> Doom. No, he looks too much. Unless they're gonna change his face in the movie, like give him a facial prosthetic, and he's <laughs> supposed to be someone else. Okay, fine. And then you know, RDJ is the one playing him. I can buy that. That's but if you're gonna have him show up as himself in the movie, he's got to be Tony Stark now. How do you explain Tony Stark now being Doctor Doom? That's the only way I can see it. Is that right there? The only other things I have seen to support the Tony Stark variant as Doctor Doom is that 
the popular theories are the following, and it's a short list. His in a different universe, his parents were originally from Latveria, and they don't make the trip to to the United States as immigrants, and they don't change their name from Doom to Stark. That's theory number one. Theory number two is we have the same sequence of the first Iron Man movie. He comes out of that cave instead of thinking heroic, like thinking on good terms, he's thinking on evil terms of how is he going to get back at humanity for the punishment he went through. And the other thing to go along with that, instead of shrapnel hitting his heart, maybe shrapnel damages his face, and that's why he has to wear that mask of his 98% of the time on screen. So, I mean, that's the, I mean, th- those, are, those are the theories I could, like, I could honestly see working out. That's a good theory. So I, again, like again, we I have. Like, I like we the ha- shrapnel one. We have precedent of multiple actors playing different characters in the. Not on this level, though. Universe. Not on this level. Yeah. This is too. He's the he he. We is just the got Chris Evans. How is it not on this was, level? Chris Evans is number two behind RDJ. Oh man, don't don't give me Fantastic Four and and, and, and Flamer guy. I'm not talking about that. That was totally separate. <laughs> Because they weren't even in in the M's, they were in it, but they weren't really. They were like the redheaded stepchildren. No one wanted to talk about, you know. So don't <laughs> don't try to bring that up. It, it's 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 it, Tony Stark was MCU. He's the one that really yeah. kicked this thing off. I agree. It's like the opposite. So you bring up Chris Evans. That's the opposite effect. It would be like if Captain America was first, and then he went yeah. and played the character yeah. of of the flame one guy. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the opposite. Yeah. Well, you may not. Well, you may not remember these movies. You may not remember these movies. You had you had Tim Blake Nelson who played uh, the Doctor in The Incredible Hulk, who eventually becomes the leader, and he will be donning that green character, the leader in the new Captain America movie. All these years later, he went off and did a scientist character in the rebooted Fantastic Four movie. So, again, like I mean. (laughs) Just visually, it's not like he changed his face or anything. Like, I think folks are smart enough to know that these are actors. They play different roles. They no, do this no, and that. no, 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 no. I can't disagree with you more. As a fan, there's absolutely no way I'm going to buy Tony Stark. He's not Tony He's Stark. not going to be revealing his Tony face the entire movie. If he does, it's going to be like for five seconds. So, so if Wolverine, if Hugh Jackman were to come back, as another character, mm-hmm. Featherman, you would say, "Oh, that's that's Featherman. That's not mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman." Come on, come on, yeah. Josh. You're better than that. We know that's it, not, it kinda, hey, the immersion of. Hey, it if you're gonna if you're about. gonna bring up an example, bring up a logical answer, not that is not, logical. It's no, the there's no thing. such character, no, and there's not. no way that would happen. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, it isn't because, like Josh said, they're likely gonna change his voice and not show his. Facing if it is, it's gonna have stuff on it. To so show like, we're never like he's, gonna, he's gonna be okay, unrecognizable. If you say we're never gonna see him, and he's just like I said, if he's just a facial prosthetic, we never yeah. see him. He's just an actor playing the role. Fine, I can buy that. The yeah. only but time I, I, can I gotta know, too. he's gonna take off the mask sometime mm-hmm. in the movie. To kind of like the first Iron Man, where he kept saying. Oh, are you Iron Man? No, no, no. Whatever. At the end, mm-hmm. he's like, Yeah, I'm Iron yeah, Man. I, I guess actually, at the end, he's gonna pick it off. Oh my God! It's Tony Stark. Yeah. And then, bam! Credits. Yeah. But because otherwise, why be, would they even? That can't be Tony Stark because I, as a fan, am not supposed to recognize him as Tony Stark because he's an actor playing a different role. Mm-hmm. That, that yeah. doesn't fly. Yeah. With, that's an insult to my intelligence. What me and Josh are saying is that when if he takes off his, mask, I have I have a picture behind me. I have a picture be... behind me of what Doctor Doom's face is essentially looking like, and it's up, mm-hmm. and it's up on the stream for folks to see. His face behind the mask or helmet or whatever iteration they're going to do is going to cover up his face. Behind the mask, whatever iteration you read, something bad happens to where he is unrecognizable. And the only way he would still maintain the Doctor Doom name, powers, and whatnot is if they do some plot device to where they ha- like he gains the ability and powers to heal himself and thus he looks a resemblance of Robert Downey. But even if you do do that, have the appearance of what he had at Comic-Con. Get rid of the facial hair, give him a little bit of a mullet, and he's not Tony, that does not look like Tony Stark. I'm sorry. Okay, I got that. But why bring back 
why bring why bring RDJ back? I can't explain that. I can't explain that at all. I can't explain that at all. There's no one else. There's no other actor they could bring back at this point for a cameo or a major role that yeah, would bring as much hype as the one who started no. it all. No, you can. You can, you can why bring him back? That kind of ruins. Yeah. I mean, why? There's got to be a reason why you're using that actor. Yeah. There's plenty of good actors out there who yeah, can act are. the hell out of that role. If you're you not know, and it would still be the role. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, I can't. I can't explain why him. I can't. That I cannot well, you, explain. You have to be able to explain the why if you're going to have me buy your reasoning. Yeah, the only That's thing I can. The, the only thing I can do on my end is do my best to explain how this can work. Now there. Yeah. Are, now there are ways where it cannot work, and I think Marvel is smart enough to not go down that route, or else they're going to be digging their graves uh, financially going forward because. It was revealed that they are paying the Russo brothers to come back to direct these films, eighty million, forty million a pop, and they're saying Robert Downey's salary is going to be more than eighty million. So you're yeah. talking. So this is why I don't buy that Chris Evans is going to come back because this is why I don't buy Chris Evans going to come back because he is going to say at the negotiation table, "Hey, I'm just as good as Robert Downey Jr." I want ninety million between these two films. You're talking close to two hundred million dollars between two Four actors, people. between two oh. people. There's absolutely no way I can see Chris Evans coming back unless not, he says, I'm "You know what? Bring, For Chris the sake Evans of financial coming, stability, I, was, I will take some I points." Say Chris Evans was coming back. I was just using that as an example. Yeah, yeah, but there's absolutely no way unless he takes a massive, massive pay cut compared to Robert Downey. That, 80 more than 80 million between two films for that actor oh oh my god well, that's that's not even an argument i mean that's not even a point to make i, I would think that it, we're talking about robert downey jr i think that that's the that's that's what we're talking about and so in order for me to buy that care why why is he coming back to act in that role there's got to be a specific reasoning behind it yeah but we can't we can only speculate so much i know that you're not i'm not asking you to look into the future in your crystal ball <laughs> but the question was asked and if you're asking me there has to be a logical reason why and the only logical reason for him to come back in any form in the mcu is as tony stark what variant what kind what role he plays i don't know but he has to be tony stark he can don the dr doom mask but it's tony stark See, I don't, I don't yeah. believe that I, because you can wear a shirt, like if anyone else were to become Iron Man, that doesn't make them Tony Stark all of a sudden. Yeah, this is your that, argument with, uh, with, with uh, Captain not America, Dad. Yeah, yeah, this is your own cap from argument with Captain America. Saying that if Robert Downey is in the MCU, he has to be Tony Stark. Yes. But that's like saying if, like, if there's a certain uh, hero in there, it has to be played by a certain person. It's like, well, what if Wolverine got recast by someone else? As someone else, you're saying mm. that wouldn't be Wolverine now because it's not Hugh Jackman? No, that's his role. What I'm saying, though, if you have a Wolverine and Hugh Jackman in the movie and Hugh Jackman is not Wolverine now, then I got a problem with that. Yes, but there are other, like we saw in this movie, there are other versions that of that name. Yes, I agree. And Tony not. Stark could be another version of Tony Stark. No, that's what I'm saying. Just because, like, how there was another... Uh, Wolverine, which is Logan. Mm -hmm. So there was another Logan that wasn't Hugh Jackman. You can have another Tony Stark that isn't Robert Downey, and that should also imply the reverse, which is you can have Robert Downey Jr. not be Tony Stark. I just, I will have to agree to disagree. I, I think a, but you, I will not watch that yeah. movie if, if I find <laughs> out that Robert Downey Jr. is, I'm expected to see his face. And he's Tony Stark looking, and then they're saying, that's not Tony Stark. That's an insult to my intelligence. That's all I'm saying. Well, yes, here, here's, here's, here's one thing. That. Hey, hey, here's one thing, okay. and, we'll close, and we'll close it uh, and not stay on this subject mm -hmm. too long. The, the one thing that I will guarantee on this is that two things. They did not just say, hey, Robert Downey, you want this role? No. I'm no, like any other role, unless this is, De unless this is Deadpool and unless this is – uh, Wolverine with Hugh Jackman in this particular movie. When you're casting a role for something that's never been done in the movie, you have a slew of actors that come in there. So I'm sure Killian Murphy, I'm sure 
McConaughey or whoever is involved. Uh, what's his name from Breaking Bad? He's going to be in the new uh, Captain America movie. Uh, black guy. I keep forgetting his name. Chicken he's, guy. He's, Chicken he's been fan casted as either Magneto, Charles Xavier, or in Doctor or Doctor Doom in some cases. I'm sure he was thrown out that role for potentially. So they went. Th- I'm, they had to have gone through many different actors, and they say, you know what, Robert Downey. Yeah, you. This is it. Like for what we're aiming for, you nail it. You nail it for what we're trying to go for in this movie. Two, because it, they are because, not because in the marketing of this movie. They will not for the purpose for the marketing for the marketing of Avengers five. You will not see his face at all, at all. Mm -hmm. If you do, that's going to be an in theater reaction, holding that card to the chest. So you will not know if he's a variant of Stark or not Mm -hmm. until you walk into that movie theater and watch that movie. That I can guarantee. Oh, I'm sure. I'm not going to go the first night. I'm sure I'll hear about it. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are going to be talking now the spoilers of Deadpool and Wolverine. And before we don the spoiler talk and what we loved about the movie, what we didn't like about the movie, we are going to rate this movie. We are going to rate this as the following. Don't bother. Nice. Nice, medium, rare. Or whip out that extra large bucket of popcorn with the extra butter. I will say this movie rating deserves the large popcorn with extra butter on it. I will throw it over to you, Dad. How would you rate Deadpool and Wolverine on this rating system? Well, I think if Robert Downey Jr. was in it, it would be so much better. (laughs) Oh, my Lord. (laughs) We have moved on from Robert Downey. I I think it was... um, I, you know what? I, I'll give it the extra large buttered popcorn. I just, uh, well, I'll give my reasonings later, but if you want me to rank it, I, yeah, I'll give it, a, it on a scale, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. All right, Keith, what do you think? Uh, definitely a large popcorn extra butter, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Noah? This movie is awesome. No, wait, no, wrong thing. Extra large popcorn. <laughs> nice. All right, fellas, Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool and Wolverine and I will and we're going we're going to start off this thing with initial thoughts on the movie and Noah what are your initial thoughts on the movie before we talk spoilers Uh I thought it was really fun I liked it I had a hard time leaving deciding at first if I liked the first one or this one better I think I had a more fun time in this one cuz it was funnier and I think most people agree with uh, that the second Deadpool is probably the weakest of the three, but it's still enjoyable. But I really like this movie. It had a lot of laughs, and I didn't have a whole lot to complain about. All right, Keith, what do you think? I thought the movie was fantastic. I thought the uh, comedy in it was well placed. It wasn't like overdone. Um, I thought the throwbacks and the cameos were well done in every aspect as well. Um, the jokes were, were over the top, which would you expect if you're going to see a Deadpool movie. Um, yeah, I thought it was just great. The action scenes, I mean, the, the intro, obviously we're going to go into that, but I thought the intro was one of the best intros of a Marvel movie of all time. Um, so, yeah, just fantastic movie. It's one of the few movies in a long time that I'm like instantly like, I want to go see it again, like as soon as the movie ended. So, How, how many times have we seen this movie? I've only seen it once. Once for you and yep. Noah. Dad, how many times have you seen this movie? I've seen it five times. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a lie. That's a lie. I have seen it six times. I have seen it six times. So I have wow. seen it with friends, you have, you have by myself. Yes, times. I have. And I have the receipts to prove it on my movie pass. Non plug, uh, shameless plug there with my movie subscription. Thank you very much. That's one, that's one less time than you saw Dirty Dancing. Hey, so, that's, okay. that's technically mm-hmm. movie subscription. You got to remember to put the plug out there. No, I'm not doing regal yeah. reward. We don't have a regal here, Noah. We don't have an AMC here. We don't have a Cinemark here. That's why I have Movie Pass. What do you have? It's called Malco. They have a monopoly on this place. Oh, I, that's where we used to go. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, my initial thoughts on this movie is as follows, and that is this. This movie just takes the cake. This movie takes the cake with everything, 
from jokes, from story, from the chemistry between Deadpool and Wolverine, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. The fight scenes between the two of them are some of the best we have ever seen. I mean, it's the only time we've seen them to duke it out against each other properly on film. Uh, this is up there with me uh, post Endgame. This is up there with No Way Home. In terms of all the MCU movies, I would say this in no particular order. This now is top three MCU for me with Civil War, No Way Home, and now Deadpool and Wolverine in no particular order. One day I'll like Civil War more than the other. One day I'll like No Way Home more than the others. And then now we're riding a fever pitch for Deadpool and Wolverine. So I will go and we will go ahead and start off this spoilery discussion with the opening credits, which is in sync with Bye Bye Bye. Just utter... Mwah, just utter brilliance from Ryan Reynolds and the company and company there. One thing that you will notice is unlike the first two movies of Deadpool and of Deadpool, the first two movies through the opening credits, they don't show the actual names of the producers, writers or whatnot. It's just like it's like some a hole who wrote this script or some mm-hmm. like videographer, blind owl, like random like shticks at the studio that wasn't the case here but it was more than made up than with the with the dances with ryan with a deadpool oh we will talk about this right off the top with this opening credits is that this was heavily marketed and told by hugh jackman ryan reynolds kevin feige everyone at marvel saying when asked how are you going to do this with Wolverine after the events of Logan? How are you going to do this without disrespecting his legacy? How are you going to do this without messing up that timeline? And they all said, they all said, Logan is not being touched. We're not going anywhere near that. We are, we're going to respect his <laughs> legacy. That was such a swan song for Wolverine. This is a different version, which is actually true. This is a different version of Wolverine. We are not going to touch anything yeah. or go near that timeline of Logan. They were correct and the first thing points. they do right off the bat is dig up the grave of Logan, mm-hmm. which I about laughed my Randolph ran off where he said, mm-hmm. we're not. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll be honest, when I saw it, when he was started cursing at the, when he finished digging, I thought he was upset because he was looking for him, expecting him to be alive, but he wasn't there. That's what I thought. <laughs> it's like, yeah. where's his body? <laughs> that would have made Kevin Feige a complete liar, but he's only he told the truth for two thirds of it. He didn't mess with the timeline, and he didn't. Uh, and it is a different Wolverine. So, mm. well, we hear from pa- that- yeah, we hear from Parallax later on in the movie. He's like, you disrespect <laughs> the hero of a great. You disrespect the name of a great hero by digging up his grave and messing up and perooting his corpse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just love the fact they uh, ripped the band ripped the bandaid off right off the bat. Right off, like, we're, yes. we're just gonna we're just gonna address this right now, and we're gonna make it very uh, very Deadpool out of it. <laughs> we're gonna turn this into something amazing, and they did. If you notice, if you notice uh, when watching the movie, he sit like when uh, when the time variance authority arrives, he pulls out like Deadpool like rips out like a piece of wood, and he sniffs it. Which is the which was actually in like still in the skeleton, where Wolverine got stabbed by the tree. Wow! So attention to detail, attention to detail. Yeah. I'll be honest. I forgot he until they showed it in the Deadpool movie. I forgot that's how Wolverine died. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've he got effed by a tree. And I've never rewatched it. <laughs> I've not. I'm. I'll be honest. It's a hot take. I'm not the biggest fan of the old man Logan story. I don't like seeing old, decrepit versions of heroes. Well, it's not hmm. technically old man Logan story. They take influences from the story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm just not a. Old man Logan a has movie, Mysterio. Actor, it has it, Giant it Man. It has movie. all sorts of different characters in it. Yeah. But yeah, that's a that's a rough take. Logan's one of my favorite favorite superhero movies. That made me it's cry. Really Andy makes you cry. Good movie, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I I agree with that as well, but I. 
It's kind of like the same reason I don't like the old, like the futuristic Justice League stuff. I don't like seeing like old Batman who can barely do, who needs a mech suit to do what he used to do. I got you. That's why I didn't like the Dark Knight as much. And before, and, and before we and before we switch it over to you, Dad, there's actually on the stream and on your full screen is that there were actual YouTubers out there that filmed and mocked Deadpool actually going to the grave. And the fact that it actually happened, you have YouTubers out there, you had how it should have ended actually mm -hmm. come out with a short of how it should have happened. It's pretty much on the nose. Like, yes, they pretty much went that route in this movie. So, Dad, opening credits. What What do you think about it? Lo absolutely loved it. That's uh, this movie had for me about five or six laugh out loud from the gut moments. Um, and I'm not. There's not a lot of movies that do that for me. Uh, but this, the first <laughs> when, he, when that song came on, he started dancing. Uh, that was one of them. I I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'm, I'm curious as if that was Ryan Reynolds actually dancing, but uh, yeah. I'm convinced uh, it, was, it is. I'm convinced it was a it good. Is. It was a good intro, um, but you know, well, is it the best? I'm is it the best Marvel intro? Later, but is this I've the best an, Marvel intro? Yeah, so mm -hmm. I think I've got an unpopular uh, take on this movie, uh, but I don't know if you know. You're just asking me about the dance and the opening, so I'm just going to answer that. We'll get to my unpopular take on this movie uh later on yeah well yeah we're going yeah we're walking through this movie step by step so yeah mm -hmm. right now we're focused sure. on the opening credits yeah Dude. i know i heard you yeah <laughs> yeah i do i i still just the opening credits because i like it hit it hit home for me for one i was a bit big in sync fan as a kid that was the first concert i ever went to so when that song <laughs> hit it, like the whole <laughs> like just nostalgia and then just i mean it's just hilarious seeing him do it and Did i not to did you do the dance moves? As I, you, I yeah. When I was at YMCA, <laughs> I literally did that dance. So that's what made it even more hilarious to me. Yeah, and I don't want to ruin it too much, but that was not Ryan Reynolds dancing. I did see that on. Uh, no. I'm convinced. Yeah, I'm convinced Reynolds. it is. I have to go back and watch the cre the credits for it. But yeah, I thought it was CGI at first, and I, then they uh they actually he actually shouted out the guy that did the dance the other day. He probably wanted to, I because it looked. I don't know why he wouldn't. It'd be very weird if he said, I don't want to do that. Maybe he doesn't Especially have because rhythm. if it had yeah. been him, he would have had to learn it, and then he could have done it on, like, talk shows. Or probably <laughs> different recording times, anything. Yeah. All right. Uh, right. And also talking about the opening credits, uh, just overall with this film uh, as we get into it, uh, what do we think of the TVA and their inclusion in this movie making the jump for those that have seen loki and i said this in my personal online uh written posts about this movie is that if you have seen loki you are getting bonus points when watching this movie if you have not seen loki you will not be lost and you will not think is there something else i should know about these guys these folks over at this organization outside of time mm -hmm. So I think their inclusion in this movie, when they first announced it, before a trailer dropped, when they were saying, when even you had the Miss Minutes Twitter account uh, talking to uh, Ryan Reynolds, like, hello, Mr. Reynolds. And then you have both of them going back and forth for a bit. Like that, lit when it started with it, I'm like, this is brilliant. Like you can do, this is how you pull it off without rebooting the character or shoehorning him into a Marvel universe that, We've never seen, we've never seen him in this universe before. How are you, how is he supposed to interact with these characters? Now we know how through the TVA. But uh, initial thoughts on the TVA for me, I think yeah. Again, if you've seen Loki, you get bonus points. I got bonus points watching this movie, and it's such a great payoff for me personally. When Loki was such a good show, it was a really really good show between those twelve episodes total, yeah. and. I think they did justice. I think they did justice, and especially, and I know it was a popular opinion online. Like, is like the TVA is dressed differently than it, they are on the show? Like, are these different? Is this a different timeline of TVA agents? I'm like, no. If you watch the end of Loki, you probably know why they've upgraded their suits. You have new management on top. They probably went 
around and upgraded a few things, including their suits, for crying out loud. They went from 1960s, 70s suits to now modern, like up with the times type of suit. So I'll, uh, so Dad, what, what are your thoughts on the inclusion of the TVA in uh, this movie? Well, it was necessary if you're going to explain how you're going to get a Wolverine without getting the Wolverine, you know, from his own timeline. Um, you had to have a TVA. Um, it, it, it didn't seem forced. It's like, again, yeah, you needed it. And also, it, it was a pathway to get to the void uh, and introduce ourselves to, you know, those characters in the void. And we get introduced to a whole other list of characters that I'm sure we're going to go over next or soon. Um, so I didn't have I didn't have a problem with my favorite part of, of the TVA literally was the guy who was uh, measuring Ryan Reynolds for his suit. Uh, I think that was hilarious. <laughs> Some are speculating that if St- if Stan Lee was not dead, that he would be the tailor. I uh, yeah, one hundred percent dressing up Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I, I would totally know. understand and totally totally get. He'll shave. Yeah, he'll be the one to shave and updo <laughs> Thor's hair in the third Thor movie, and I could yeah. totally see him dressing up Deadpool. And Deadpool's like, "Your tailor is a predator, and I love it." <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! And yes, been, uh, your pants are getting tighter. Huge, and I'm talking about that guy over there. <laughs> it would have been a huge brag for Ryan Reynolds too. He's like, I got fondled and had my butt slapped multiple times by Stan Lee. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> the only time you can say that, and it's been, and it would be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. What about you, Keith? What about your? TVA. I uh, definitely got the bonus points because Loki was fantastic. I think it's probably the best Marvel show that's been out. Other mm, WandaVision is pretty up there in in the same light. Um, but the Loki show is fantastic. So um, them using about, that. She Hulk's the best. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> you, hey, hey, mute. <laughs> yeah, mute Noah. Noah. Does, does Noah's not a timeout now. Anymore. Yeah. Noah, just mute Noah because for <laughs> what he just said. <laughs> He oh, lost all credibility. What do you say? What do you say? I didn't hear him. He said she Hulk was, was the best. best. Oh yeah, let's let's cancel the man right now. Let's yeah, just yeah, cancel get him, him out of here. Let's send him to the um, void. But yeah, Loki was fantastic, and then using that and using the TVA to tie in Deadpool and being able to introduce him that way to this world, um, and then just the intro scene of like just going from Loki was kind of like tame. Um, and then instantly, just the TVA is just getting slaughtered right off the bat um, <laughs> in this movie. Um, I thought it was really cool. One of my favorite uh, kills in the movie uh, was the stare down, and he bounces the his thing katana. In the guy's face. Yes, 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 insane. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I like the the TVA was definitely introduced correctly in this movie, not not forced. I would say my favorite. I would say one of my favorite jokes in this movie uh, at the beginning. When they when they catch up uh, with the timeline, it's like the de- the desecration of the sacred corpse, and then he's using the Wolverine claws and like it's like it's it's so Deadpool when he does it, but when you think about it logically, it's like, hey, yeah, maybe us normal people will run into that problem stabbing ourselves, trying to use the claws, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then. <clears throat> And then he's pegging with the claws those two TVA agents. It's like, sorry, Wolverine yep. is hard. It's like, make it stuff. <laughs> Mangle tried. <laughs> and by oh, the way, man. I'm now convinced that when Ma- like Mangle just came out with comments saying that he's not a big fan of making multiversal franchise type like movies in Hollywood. I'm like, you just made Logan. You just made the Wolverine. You just made Indiana Jones 5. You're about mm-hmm. to do, supposedly, a origin story of the Jedi for Star Wars. What are you talking about? You don't like doing franchise movies. You're about to do Swamp Thing. Is someone going to break it to him <laughs> about he's going to be in the cinematic universe making stuff? Like, I'm convinced he saw this movie, and then the beginning of this movie, he was so turned off that he made, off, that he made those comments. I'm convinced thing, that he was so butthurt about that. You need more man thing. The Marvel counterpart. Mm. Yeah. That I wondered how many that. Easter eggs we saw on the TVA though when they first introduced and they started introducing Deadpool to the TVA. Like, what do we do here? And he showed it. 
and all of a sudden he shows Thor crying over <laughs> Deadpool. Yeah, are we like, ever going to get that answer? Why Thor crying? We, we better get that scene at some right. point. Right. Even if it's just like an act of them that they have to pull off mm-hmm. for something, like the play and like the second Thor movie, the, no, the third Thor movie, Thor Ragnarok, where it's like the fake Odin and th- fake Loki. That's yeah. the only thing I can see it doing. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the last one of the last scenes of Doomsday, maybe. <laughs> wow. Probably the last that scenes of crazy. Doomsday. It's like the Avengers lose and Deadpool finally has his moment. It's like, this is why you were crying. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, One thing I really want to uh, see is how, like, for one, because he's been to the... MCU earlier in the film when he was uh, doing with Happy movie. Hogan. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I want to know how he ends up with the team anyway. Well, you hear at the end of the movie, uh, B-15 say to them, rest up. I have a feeling you're going to be needed soon again. Yep. So mm-hmm. that maybe right they, there. Maybe the, way, 90. maybe the way that... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the way they get him is like he says, we're a package deal. You, you don't get him without me. But also, I can't think, like, for the Avengers, the amount of people they have and the diversity of their abilities, why they would actually need Deadpool or Wolverine. Maybe for high-risk scenarios because it's impossible to kill them. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. Well, the th- there is a, there is a theory. Other. There is a theory that with one of the story arcs in Secret Wars is that it's not only a collision of multiple universes colliding on each other. It's one particular universe versus another particular universe. And there's and the theory is that it's going to be this main sacred timeline versus the Fox timeline of how mm-hmm. they collide Which and Fox they have to and they have to find a way to mesh them. with each other. Post Secret Wars. There's two Fox timelines though. So you have the prequel X-Men and then the original X-Men. Which one are you going for? I I get I get my I lose brain cells the more I think about continuity schmontinuity over at Fox because you go from well, Because they they're the because they're continuity like if I if I have to try to think how do we like does the events of Logan still happen? The year is 2029 when that happens. It's 2024 for this Deadpool and Wolverine movie. Do we have two Wolverines now w- walking around? Do we have two X twenty threes walking around oh in this universe now? Like, I just do we have an, hey hey. Do we have an alternate TVA? I mean, no, is there it's an one TVA universe with other TVAs. It's the it's well, the it's still one I TVA. Think what, I think what uh, happened, the how Deadpool went to visit the grave is he used the TVA device to go forward in time. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, we've seen that happen in Loki. So that's probably what happened. So that's probably all that was, because he died at some point in time, and but he was still the anchor. Yeah, being, but if so. you're in the year 2024, he doesn't. He's still alive, right? Yes, but like the guy was saying, the fact that he died at all, even he's the anchor being, he wasn't supposed. Like without him, your <laughs> universe stop. And he said it wouldn't have. Naturally, it would have kept going for like thousands of years anyway. Yeah, he just so, wanted to finish his job quicker. Yeah, yeah. Which this I is like a hot tub time you, machine, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know why you would do that. You're still in the X, the Fox X Men universe that has Deadpool in it. Why in the world would you want? That? Why would you not want to see how that ends? Why would you want to kill that quicker? Well, we've seen how it ends. Have you seen What If with Doctor Strange in Episode Four? We've seen what that looks like in Multiverse of Madness in one of the realities. Like we know what it looks like. I guess so, I forgot. Yeah, it's essentially like the gooification of like everything desecrating around itself, like ceasing to exist. So we've seen what it looks like. So oh no, I'm not talking about how what a universe looks like when it ends. I'm talking about watching it progress. Why would you not want to watch that story unfold in front of you? That's an interesting universe. What story it's- is that? The story of that, because uh, he said it would go on for thou- that universe would still exist for thousands of years, things going on as normal, but then things just slowly unfurl as, like like you said, um, towards the end. But until then, why would you not want to, like, why would you want to kill it quicker when you can watch it happen? 
watch like all these interesting things happen. I yeah, I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know. It's, it's, I think that's the one flaw of this another, movie that just gives me a headache that, that I just well. tune it out. I'm like, that's what the script says. This is not acolyte <laughs> when it's oh the script says this. Deal with it. No, this is that natural case of hey the character has this motivation and you somewhat and you I mean it's more believable than the acolyte. So uh, the next thing that. that we are going to be talking about in this movie after they do the desecration of the sacred corpses is him popping off into different timelines in this movie, <laughs> trying to find the perfect Wolverine. We've seen many of them. We've seen, we've seen the cavalry. We've seen mm -hmm. the classic <laughs> Wolverine versus Hulk. We've seen what is the age of apocalypse Wolverine, which is the eighties long hair looking Wolverine. And we've seen patch, what is your favorite Wolverine cameo that happened in this little montage? I'll start with you, Dad. I'm sorry. I had I had three. Uh, the funniest one was 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 little person Wolverine. I thought that was hilarious. Comic, Comic accurate, accurate Wolverine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the one that made the most sense to me moving forward should Hugh Jackman not be the Wolverine is 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 Ca Cavill? Is that how you say that? Henry Cavill, yeah. The Cavalrine. Mm -hmm. I think that scene right there it, it spoke volumes. Uh but also I mean you gotta go nice pool. I mean you know that was that to uh, me that in the I think that was his name. De nice pool was his name, right? We're talking Wolverine variants. We're not talking nice pool yet. Oh shoot. I'm sorry. Wolverine and Henry Cavill then. Cavill, I mean. Those yeah. two. All right, Keith. Uh, your turn. What do you think? De definitely the Calverine. Uh, yeah, not even close. He, dude, he, he crushed that scene. Um, they even used a, uh, like a movement that he did from another movie where he did... He Mission like, Impossible, yes. <laughs> yes, he did that in it, and I was like, no way. They I missed it the first time. I missed it the first time. I was so hyped, bro, and like I think he could play the, the part. I think he's a great actor. He he loves comics. He's a, he's a geek. If y'all don't know, on his off time, he is a geek. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, he played so. uh, in The Witcher, so. Yep. Well, he did. He did play in The Witcher, but they weren't being comically accurate, so he left. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, he, I think he would be a great Wolverine if if they end up recasting. Um, but that was my favorite variant for sure. All right, Noah, what was your favorite Wolverine my, montage? My favorite in the montage, I liked the H little Hulk cameo. I thought that was kind of cool. The funniest was the first one, the comic, the high accurate Wolverine. Although the one that piqued my interest, that kind of caught my attention, was from a comic. I'm not sure from which storyline it was. Were Are you talking about the cross? The, yeah, the skulls, and he's like mm -hmm. uh, pierced up. Yeah. I recognize that from somewhere as well. And we actually do, I don't have it on my photo montage here. You actually do get what looks like an old man, Logan. So yeah. just sitting on his little. Well, perch. yeah, he's been, he's, he's probably been stuck there for a long time. <laughs> I mean, well, but you actually get something like that people, looks I, exactly from the old man, Logan comic. Yeah. yeah. You mm -hmm. probably have to like, know what the situation from that comic that it's referencing is going on. But uh, to answer this question, but I'm still wondering why he didn't choose that Logan. Like, just free him. Because so he's I'm old. Guessing... <laughs> he just said he needed cool. coconut oil. He needed more than coconut oil to fix all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, my favorite, and I'm and before we even get to it, uh, before I get to that, what did we think about the glimpse of Hulk versus Wolverine? What liked was your it. reaction when that popped up? I liked it. Although if they were going to show that in full, they're going to have to make that rated R as well. Just to show him stabbing the Hulk multiple times. I was expecting a full throwdown. What do you think, Dad? What was your reaction? I, to tell you the truth, I got to rewatch that because I don't even remember that. He finds a particular Wolverine and it's on the screenshot if you have a if you have the stream up on your phone somewhere else. Uh, he he wears the orange and 
like the orange and brown comic accurate costume and Deadpool says to him, you fought the Hulk in this costume, right? And then he draws the claws and you see the Hulk's reflection on those claws and then you mm -hmm. see Deadpool turn around, look up to him and say in a Loki line from the first Avengers movie, I am Marvel Jesus, you big and dull creature before <laughs> he gets slapped like Dip, like Loki did essentially. <laughs> and that's I gotta rewatch that. I mean, I, I'm sure I would. I would say, oh yeah, I remember that now. But mm -hmm. right now, I'm drawing a blank. But yeah, we have the Age of Apocalypse look, where he has no left hand, goes by the monarchy of uh, Weapon X. But yeah, the one that got the most pop during the sequence was the cavalry, and probably one of the funniest lines of many funny lines is that. On behalf of all humanity, this just feels right. We will treat you so much better than mm. those bleepity bleeps down the street. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. A flat out swipe at DC right there. Yep. After he was brought back for a post credit scene for the Black, for Black Adam, only to be let go the next month later because they're rebooting the DC universe right now. Yep. Yep. So, <laughs> so I just, dumb. Um, I just remembered another Logan variant that uh, he was that he ran into the one eyed one patch. The card yes, table. I forgot about him, I'll be honest, because it, it skimmed over him so quickly. Mm -hmm. Some were speculating that when that scene was shown in the trailer, that yes, that was patch, but they the focus wasn't on him, the focus on was uh, who's dealing the cards. And some were speculating, could have that been our first scene of Gambit on screen? Which Ooh. we don't know if that was Gambit, and we'll, right. we'll never know if that is Gambit or not. So that I was, doubt it. That was one of the speculations going into the film. I will say, Dad, I think Dad really enjoyed Gambit in the movie. I like well. I like the fact that you know the line was who who is your voice coach or whatever. Who's your minions? dialect coach? I the thought minions? that was hilarious. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I think he acted that role very, very well. I would, I would pay to see him, you know, star in that movie as Gambit. Yeah, okay. I, it looked like though his suit was a little tight around his face, a little too tight. Well, that's how it is in the. <laughs> well, that's the accurate. Yeah. Uh, it was very though. accurate. Well, yeah, I don't mind it being tight. It just made it kind of conform to like, <laughs> like curved around his face in a way that made him look like he was heavier than he actually is. Like, he wasn't, he, it didn't, it curved his face, if anything. And that was not a good look, I don't think. I, he looked good in the costume. I just don't think his face should have been accented to that degree. All right, so next thing we will talk about are the fight scenes between one Deadpool and one Wolverine. Which one did we enjoy the most? Did we enjoy the first fight in front of the Fox logo being pruned? Which, by the way, which is another funny line. Where in the world are we? I don't know. It looks Matt Maxi, but that would be IP infringement, would it? <laughs> you got you have that and another Matt Max joke that was in this movie. So, the, what which fight did we enjoy the most? Did we enjoy the first one or the Honda Odyssey fight? The Odyssey fight was better. Yeah, I agree because uh, they played the greatest showman songs during it. They played oh, it for two seconds. They played it for two seconds. Well, my favorite part of the scene was after it was over with, they go to another scene, but they come back and they the, the camera's coming down on the van. And it, you know, the van is destroyed, and there's Deadpool <laughs> with about 8,000 seatbelts wrapped around it. <laughs> I thought that oh, was so man. funny. Yeah, this is great. The, the word, I mean, he just cusses him out, basically, just tells him he's like the lowest human ever. And then Deadpool just looks at him, I'm, I'm going to fight you now. <laughs> no, it's the way, it's the delivery behind of how he said it. Like, mm -hmm. like everything that led up to that point. And then after the bad talk of uh, Logan uh, to Wade that way, like you can see even through the CGI facial expression of Deadpool's mask, like, mm -hmm. like man, this is hurt. Like it's serious, like, seriously, like seriously, like striking a nerve with him. Like, yeah. And the way yeah. it, his face looked and the way it delivered, it's like, I'm gonna fight you now. I'm gonna fight you. Now. Like that, yeah. that <laughs> man, that that it struck a bone in me too. Like that struck a nerve in me as well. I'm like, man, that. That sucks to be Deadpool right now. Mm -hmm. 
But this particular yeah. Wolverine, like, almost similar to Logan, but in, like, a very different messed up way of how we see this particular character. But I think both fight sequences are real were really good and well executed. I think it was a great idea to make his swords adamantium because yeah. that was my first thought going into this movie. How is he supposed to fight Wolverine's claws without his swords getting destroyed? That's what I asked Dad. I, while we were in line for concessions, I'm like, how do you think they're going to do that? And they quickly like do it right off the bat. It's like, these, sword, yeah. these katana swords are adamantium, baby. I assume the bullets are adamantium as well. Not necessarily. They don't have to be because he didn't. He only he only really shot him in the body most. Yeah, like up close. Yeah, the first times he really used the guns were on his sides and just unloaded and threw mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the best vis- visualization of that car scene, which by the way, did, were we all laughing or we just felt bad for Honda when they when Deadpool was just back talking the Odyssey. When they're, when they're about to get in the car, it's like, this is not just any car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw a sticker on the back of a minivan that said, hey, cool minivan, said no one ever. So, you know, <laughs> everybody knows it's not cool to have a minivan, but if you have a family, you need yeah. one. So yeah. uh, any, any, any publicity in a movie for a car is good publicity. Yeah, very true. Yeah, and you can't go wrong with a Honda, to be honest. Nah. <laughs> they last a while. Mine didn't. <laughs> Unless you're Noah. <laughs> yeah, the right. transmission went out on it. Mm. <laughs> what do you say, Noah? But was but was replaced. So. And then it uh, and then it stopped running not long after that. I had to yeah, get that, that happens when you get run into by a tractor trailer. <laughs> Uh, that, now you're being pedantic. Ah, pedantic. Okay. <laughs> That's a word. All right. So after we get through the first fight sequence, we come across Chris Evans. Now, yep. just to get you your reaction <laughs> on when he appears, how big was the pop in the movie when it was revealed? Did you know it was Chris Evans when it was when it was when he first appeared? And what was the pop in your theater when he unveiled the hood? I'll start with you, uh, Keith, on that. Who you starting with? Keith. Okay. Um, I did not know it was him. My brother did. My brother was like, is that Captain America? And I was like, I, I don't know. I can't really tell. Um, and then the pop in the theater when he unveiled his hood, it was huge. It, was, it, it felt in-game-ish. Everybody was hype. Um, everybody was definitely into the movie. I, I went second night not official like first midnight but second night uh it's a pretty packed theater um and i mean mean, it was a huge huge theater too it was was awesome Uh, i like i like when you're going to movies like this and it's like an event it it was a good time yes but yeah the the pack (laughs) the uh, the pop was good for chris evans for sure what was your thoughts of the human of him being human torch that oh, bait, dude, I love that. I love that. It, that I, I like that better than. <laughs> he's it, gonna it. say it. He's gonna say yeah, Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for it, and then he just got flame on. I was like, I like <laughs> mind blown. Yeah, it was awesome, man. All right, Dad. Uh, what was your? Re- hey, we grew up with those Fantastic Four mm-hmm. movies, Dad. So, what was yep. your reaction? Yes, we to did. the whole thing. Well, I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know what to expect the character to be. Honestly, I thought. The way he was moving around, the way he was dressed, I was thinking, oh, that kind of reminded me of the Punisher, but I didn't think that would add a lot of value to the movie. So, you know, I didn't really expect anything, really. Um, I knew expect a surprise. But when he came out as Chris Evans, I was thinking, oh, Captain America, here we go. We're, ju- <laughs> we're getting the band back together. And then when Deadpool said, he's going to say he's going to say it. And then he said, flame, that was one of my belly laughs in, in the movie was when he said that. And you just sense Deadpool going, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, no, really? <laughs> He's going to say it. I'm saying it. Fly more. What? Yeah. yeah. I thought that was hilarious. Oh, man. All right, Noah. What was the your... audience. Yeah. The audience. No, I don't remember the audience necessarily reacting. I don't, I don't either. I think the audience was actually like a normal audience. That Probably because when we were in, we were in like, Upper Suffolk, so it's not the biggest place for nerds. 
but <laughs> yeah, our audience was rather tame. I think they they had a couple of moments, uh, like well, like I know you're going to talk about this probably the next question when certain characters walked out. Uh, but that was I mean yeah. real. I mean there was a couple of laughters and a few claps, but I mean not a huge reaction except for when they met some more people in the void. And then after that particular scene where he falls out of the sky, gets clipped in the nuts, bangs his head, <laughs> and falls, and it's like, we don't know that guy. <laughs> I, we, get the saber tooth, we get the saber tooth that. fight. Were we underwhelmed or what kind of expected that uh, from that saber tooth Wolverine showdown? Um, I was very underwhelmed, to tell you the truth. I was like, that's, I mean, that was probably one of the moments that the credit credits did a disservice to the movie because the credits made it seem like that could have been a, a significant a significant part of the movie but it wasn't in my opinion i, don't, I mean well, it really wasn't but i i deadpool, was underwhelmed with saber too deadpool did preface it, the fight right before he started saying fans have been waiting for this for for like however many years so mm -hmm. i think we should have but i was half expecting that to happen but i was also half hoping that it wouldn't so when that when that clip appeared online before the movie came out and he was telling that to Wolverine, I thought, honest to God, I'm like, and and this was rumblings of when I heard like, hey, the Hulk could possibly show up in the movie. I'm like, you know what? This is gonna be the bait and switch where they're using that voice audio, but Deadpool is talking to Wolverine before he fights the Hulk. That's what I thought that mm -hmm. particular line of dialogue was for. And they actually do for Sabretooth. I'm like Oh, so it was true. <laughs> uh, but if you go back and watch X-Men Origins, uh, uh, I watched a whole bunch of X-Men movies uh, after I saw this Deadpool and Wolverine, just to refresh night. my memory. If you go back and watch Origins, if you go back and watch Origins, uh, in the alley where he reveals his adamantium claws to Sabretooth, he's like, how you, how you gonna, how you suppose you kill me? And he's like, I'm going to cut your head off. See if that works. And then you see it happen in Deadpool and Wolverine. He goes for the head, cuts his head off. I'm like, okay, yes, there's the connection. And by the way, in X2, Pyro turns on the radio and you hear the NSYNC song for like three, four seconds. Yeah. So if oh, you wow. want to li so go song? back and listen. The, and the intro song of this one, the NSYNC. Yeah. Oh. It was on a, Pyro switched on the radio for like five seconds when they were wow. on the run in X2. So yeah. if you want to talk like major foreshadowing, that's one that's of the pretty cool. That's one pretty cool. One thing, because I watched it last night, it had been a while, quite a few years since I'd seen X-Men Origins Wolverine. I remember liking it, another unpopular opinion. I thought it was entertaining enough. Yeah. Rewatching it now, I still was entertained. I did never realize how bad CGI the claws were. Yeah, that was that was famously documented. Yeah, with budget oh, cuts. Oh, stuff. is that the one with the bad, the bad, like huge claws? They were big. I don't know. I wouldn't say they were huge. The one but... where he like looks in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, the mirror yeah. part. And then there's actually a scene in the alley where they look like tiny pencil sticks coming out of his hands. Oh. <laughs> Just before he's about to kill Sabretooth, and Gambit interrupts uh, the scene. Gotcha. Where they look like pencil sticks coming out of his hands, actually. So, uh, and then we are introduced to our villain in the movie, Cassandra Nova, the twin of Charles Xavier, pruned into the void, crazy powers, essentially, OP. What do we think about the inclusion of her? And I will start off by saying, unexpected the most unexpected death scene I've ever seen that when that happened, I was so shocked when that yeah. happened. But then again, lean up to it. It's like, Oh, Cassandra's told us about you. Like, I know Johnny's told us all about you. I'm like, I thought he, I, I thought he was crap talking and making it up. That. And then we find out in the post credit scene. Oh no. Deadpool was actually telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like in Johnny's corner. I'm like, no, no, I didn't say mm -hmm. that. 
So what are yeah, we? Yeah, but that was that was my uh, another one of my laugh out loud. From I don't even Bush know what half that stuff means. When yeah, when his when his skin came off his body and he pan and his eyes were like, you know, <laughs> he's like, what just happened? And then he crumbles. Mm -hmm. That was hilarious. I, I don't know. It was so funny. <laughs> oh man. Definitely, it was a good intro to show how powerful she was. Like she just can yeah. instantly kill yeah. somebody that quick. So, what? Her, the only thing I can think of is her abilities are telepathy, but she has to get into their head. But part of that great visualization, by the way, when she first does it to Deadpool, Deadpool, that was creepy. That was really creepy. What? Mm -hmm. How she used her powers? Yeah. Yeah. I thought she was spawning them at first. I didn't realize she had appeared behind them. So her thing, I'm guessing, is other than. Telekinesis or te telepathy is um, reality manipulation. She basically has an infinity stone combined with her mind powers. Well, that's what Charles Xavier does. I mean, he he could do that to anyone's mind if he wanted to. So. Well, yeah, I'm talking about what she does in reality when she's not in their head. Like, all that she sent Wolverine into the ground and then moved him. Yeah, she has telekinesis, <laughs> like uh, Jean Grey. Yeah. Yeah, or Magneto well, with metal, than, yeah. That's more than just telekinesis, I would I'd say. That's almost... Because that's too strong and precise for just regular telekinesis. She's basically like Jean Grey in the third X-Men movie if she had never been, like, stifled. If, if she had developed a f complete personality, I feel like. If it had been a horrible person. Uh -huh. Hmm. Because I so, think the only thing in the third X Men movie keep making her one dimensional evil was just the fact that she she had two separate personalities. Yeah, I think for a first time uh, iteration of this character, again, like Marvel, nine times out of ten knocks it out of the park with their character interpretations. Like even for the even for the slack that uh, Ant Man three gets. They nailed Kang. Like, they nailed the character down to the bone, to the abilities, and, his, inten and his intentions. Like, that was the one redeeming part of Ant-Man 3 was Kang, showing how powerful he was. Never mind the plot points in the movie where he's overrun by a whole bunch of ants, and never mind the fact that they reshot the ending to where Ant-Man would win instead of Kang winning, and he was supposed to get out of the quantum realm. Never mind that at all. Forget the script the character itself they nailed it with kang and i think they nailed it uh with cassandra even with how little she's relatively new in the comics as well she's relatively new like less than 20 years old so the fact you have that going for it i think they nailed it in terms of how menacing she was her intentions like she didn't come across like the mustache twirling type of villain per se like you can understand her motives and you like and we'll get to it at the end of it like her reasoning behind like hey yeah like this may have happened to her but she still have a soft spot uh yep. for particular characters in this movie and then we get to them escaping uh oh by the way before we get, before we get into the next thing what did we think of the whole Stick that giant man was their fortress. Brilliant. Oh yeah. Pretty funny, or just like too on the nose of like how many dead MCU characters can we use? I yeah. I'll be honest. I felt sad for him. I'm like, oh, that. <laughs> I felt more desecration was done to him than the Logan. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Okay. I just. Yeah. Because Logan was still. Uh, was they didn't take apart his bones. <laughs> but giant man, you're, you're just constantly using his corpse as your mm -hmm. base of operations at this point. But they don't rip apart the armor. They don't rip apart his bones. That's true. <laughs> they only addressed it once, though, and they didn't even address it really as like Ant Man. They just kind of addressed it as Paul Rudd, and it's like, oh look, Paul Rudd. He finally aged. aged. Yeah, he. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was great. Uh, I just feel like they. I don't know. They should have addressed it. Maybe how it happened or something. But I was wondering how he got there in the first place. Right. It's probably a variant. Yeah, probably an unwanted variant. Sure. Yeah. In the past, yeah. Or a variant that had died as Giant Man. Yeah, and what, and the next thing we will get into, the introduction, the long-awaited introduction of one dog pool. Mary <laughs> Puppins. 
dog poop for short. I love this canine little uh, little creature, and the song selection for this, like, like Lady in Red, when they play that song in slow motion with the dog, I thought was brilliant. Brilliant song selection choice. <laughs> so that's all I had to say about the ugly. It's ugly looking, but I could totally live with it. I could live with it. That's such a cute dog. It's that's ugly, such a cute that's dog. So ugly that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> what do we think about dog pool in this movie? I thought it was good. I thought it yeah. just uh, like a good little uh, like side like joke kind of thing introduction. Uh, easy way to introduce him to a uh, nice pool, you know, um, like get him to chase it to get to him. So I thought it was a good good way to put it in. <laughs> I thought I thought the second time we see Dog Pool was probably the funniest one, where he pops out the portal wearing the goggles, mm-hmm. looking happy, and then oh. you have that particular song playing. And, I, and I'm, I'm honestly sitting in my chair. I'm snapping my fingers to the song as it's playing when I'm watching it for the first time. I'm like, yeah, this is a nice, cool, rhythmic kick to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love that second scene as well because it's like, come on, baby. Can it be? Hi there. <laughs> there. Well, this, is, this movie is a perfect example of how a soundtrack can, can really, really – uh, elevate a, a movie uh, or a scene. Uh, it's, it, but we've seen it in, I think, all the Deadpool movies. The, the, the soundtrack has been really good, uh, but this one specifically. Uh, and so, you know, without that, without that right song, it's, it's still a good scene, but with the right song, it's just elevated to a different, you know, level. And not just the dog, dog pool, but I mean, so many other scenes throughout the movie. All right. And then. And fun fact, this is not the first time we've seen animal variants in this universe. We've seen, if you blink and miss it moment in Loki episode five, we see Frog Thor down underground trying to go for the hammer, but he's stuck in a jar. And then we see, <laughs> croc- and then we see crocodile Loki. Yeah. Alligator mm-hmm. or alligator Loki yep. variant. So this okay. is not the first time we've seen animal variants in this universe, and if they ever did want to come out with a TVA wacko animal version of a character show, I would so watch that. I would so watch that. See animal variants of our characters. Oh, there you go. Pick uh, Spider Pig. That's another variant for you right there. Yeah. He's a pig. So, all right. And then we get into the next thing, and that's and it's probably the one that got the most pop in the theaters. The introduction of classic Fox characters and non-classic uh, Fox <laughs> X-Men characters. The first one being Elektra. What did we think about the intro? Like, what was your reaction to the introduction of her? I'll start with you, Dad. I did. You know, when she first walked out, I had no clue who she was. I was like, "Who's that?" You know, um, the crowd reacted a little bit, uh, but then I got. Oh, oh. Okay, then I recognized uh, who she was. Um, I'm not that. Oh, hey, Julie. I forgot. I forgot. I'm dressed. That's good. You good? You good? They can't see me back here. Yes, they can. No. No. I cannot. Anyway. Um. So. So yeah, it was you know, it was it was a good. I I didn't really like the movie Electra, so the character Electra didn't really do it for me too much. Yeah, but I, I just the were. mere introduction of the character back into the universe, I thought was pretty cool. All right, Noah, what was your I thoughts? Would say, I never saw those original movie or well, those two original movies, so I I recognized who they were. I recognized Electra because of her uh, side. I thought that's who it was going to be when I saw her like defend herself, and then I was like, "Okay, they're bringing him back." And then I I realized like late, like a few minutes later after they were all introduced, I'm like, "Oh, these are probably the I forgot they had like done those movies way back in the day." <laughs> I never saw any of them. <laughs> after you're done watching, after we're done here, Noah, start with the original Blade movie and work your way up. No. <laughs> 
You can skip the third one, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> uh, Keith, what, Electra, what did you think about it? Uh, I knew who she was. I remember the movie. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Electra movie, but I did know exactly who she was. Um, Theater-wise, she did not get the biggest pop. A lot of people I could tell like just didn't know who she was. Uh, but I did. I was like, oh, that's Electra. That's really cool. They brought her in here. I was like, if she's the first one, they're going to be bringing more out. That was the main thing. <laughs> I was like, there's going to be some more people coming. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was really cool. Um, I, like I said, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Electra movie. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was she in the original Daredevil? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, the so infamous I actually, teeter-totter scene. I remember, I liked that movie. God. Yeah. I actually liked Daredevil. Um, probably low. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty low on the totem pole, but I think yeah, I, I, I liked I liked her better in that than her actual Electra movie, from what I remember. Did anyone catch the Daredevil joke? Oh, yeah, yes. definitely. Definitely caught that. That's, I'm, that so, was so, I'm so one sorry. It's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That was I one didn't of my... understand it because I didn't know who originally played da- Daredevil and I never saw those movies. So Dad had to explain it to me. He said they used to be married, so that's why it's funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the one that I think got the biggest pop in my theater, personally, yeah. Wesley Snipes coming back as Blade. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. When he, I had no idea about this one. I had no idea. And I didn't believe it from some speculation online. I'm like, I cannot see that happening. I can't. I mean, not that I didn't want to. I'm like, of all the ones that we can speculate, like Gene Gray could show up, Storm could show up, uh, Scott Summers could show up, Rogue could show up, Xavier could show up, Matt Nito could show up. I'm like, Blade, the original Blade was low Mm. on the pole for me. I would have said, I would have, I would have pet more money betting that one of the Sony Marvel characters like Morbius was going to be in this movie (laughs) before I believed Wesley Snipes was going to come back as Blade. It's Morbin time. So yeah, this, yeah, this got (laughs) the biggest pop in my theater when he walks up on in screen and the joke of retired, (laughs) it's retarded. It's like, nope, retired. I'm in the void. I'm not trying to get canceled twice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I know, I don't like you. You never did. I'm like, oh yes, that's like straight, like Blade Three reference right there. Yeah, because they, they never enjoyed like working other. together. Yep, and, they hated each other. That yeah. is actually accurate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Dad, what was your reaction with Blade? Um, yeah, it, it it garnered the most reaction of the whole movie was when he walked out. Uh, I, I kind of expected it because I don't know where I heard it or read it, but I knew that I thought I remember that they want to reboot Blade or have another part three, four, whatever Blade. Yeah, there's supposedly a stuff. reboot so happening I kinda, with Mahershala. I kind of figured that they would reintroduce or not reintroduce, but it, you know, put him in this if he came out as a cameo. Did not surprise me. What did surprise me though. Uh, and I, hey, everybody gets, you know, if, if you don't die, obviously you're going to get older. He, he looked older to me, uh, in this, like to the point where I was like, I appreciate him. I appreciate his character, but to do another movie or two where he were to star as Blade, I don't know that, I don't know. I don't, I would, I would buy it, but it just. I don't know. You have a certain feel and look for a character when they start getting older uh, compared to their earlier versions of themselves. You're like, ah, it's like, ah, you know, you're not capturing the same magic is, is guess, guess what I'm trying to say. So if they're going like to Indiana Jones, yeah, <laughs> kind of like the Indiana Jones. Um, so, too old. but it's not that he's too old. It's just that he looks mm-hmm. older. And something about his mouth and his teeth, because his smile, he's always wearing shades, obviously. So um, it it just it didn't look. And so I focused on that. And, you know, that's me. That's my OCD. And I just start I got to look at something and I focus on it. And it's like, you know, if you're talking to me and you got schmutz in your mouth in the corner or you got a booger or something, I don't hear a word you're saying. I'm looking at that land. Wow. What what is going on with your mouth, your nose? Uh, So. But I, I like the fact that they were introduced because to me, I love Blade. I thought I saw the movies uh, probably 15 times because I was on a cruise <laughs> and somebody had the DVDs and I just watched them over and over and over again. 
Um, so you know, I really liked it. So uh, yeah, I, I liked it because that means maybe they're bringing him back. You know, maybe his own movies. You know, I, I don't know. So. Yeah. He was one of my, they said they said this was a they said this was a one time thing with Wesley Snipes the the new Blade movie that they're making is with Mahershala Ali starring in the okay role. Mm-hmm. so yeah I would, we're good but, and that's another and that, that is Josh, another actor who has played multiple MCU roles by the way he was a character in Luke Cage I forget what the character's name was he's like a mob boss in Luke Cage and now he's playing. This vampire daywalker known as Blade. Mm-hmm. So to say sure. Robert Downey Jr. is the top tier actor to first want to do it, he's <laughs> technically not. He's technically not. Yeah, I'm sure everybody has seen Luke Cage 5,000 times mm-hmm. and would really, really be upset if he were to change characters. Yeah. Not. All right, Keith, what, would you, uh, what, was, what, was, the, what was your pop? What was your stick with, oh, uh, with uh, Blade? Theater wise, definitely the biggest one. It, it probably. Him and Chris Evans, pretty similar, honestly, um, in my theater. But for me, as a dude, I was I was so hyped because I love the Blade movies. Similar to Jack, I've seen the Blade movies uh, probably closer to forty times, legitimately. <laughs> uh, I've seen them uh, so many times. One of my favorite lines in any movie is the "Do you blush" uh, yeah. line, dude. Yeah. I mean, woo! Um, yeah. That gets me hyped just thinking about that. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the third one was not the best one, but there was a yeah. lot of like comedy in that one. Um, but yeah, dude, I loved it. I love seeing Blade. It, it got me all the all the nostalgia was flowing, and it also uh, speaking of having somebody else in the movie, this actually brings Ryan Reynolds' character into the MCU universe as well. So yep. you want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Noah, what you think? Well, what you think about uh, Wesley Snipes showing up as Blade? Uh, I thought it, honestly. I wouldn't have been able to tell you Wesley Snipes was ever Blade. I've never seen that movie. All right. But All right. I recognized it was Blade. So I was like, okay, yeah, I like this. I like what they're doing here. I did like his line in the movie where he said, there's only been one of me. No, there's only <laughs> ever, <there's only laughs> ever going to be one. The movie. next that shot was, after that, that like, shows Ooh. Deadpool looking at the camera. <laughs> and if you are a fan and know the whole deal of why this new blade movie is taking forever with ali like that facial expression just ex- like just shows it it's like yeah that's not true <laughs> that's so yeah. not true <laughs> yeah that's funny. all right and then the one that most people if you're not well versed in the movie news spectrum since 2015 chain tatum was cast as gambit and he finally appears as Gambit, mm-hmm. let alone just in this MCU version movie now. This is the one I was expecting to happen because those movies were supposed to, he was supposed to be getting his own solo movie when they were announcing Logan. They announced Deadpool and Deadpool 2. They announced the Fantastic Four reboot. They announced mm-hmm. X-Men Apocalypse, like this new era of Fox Marvel that's going to be crossing over with each other. And then needless to say, the films actually came out and, oh yeah, New Mutants was also part of that lineup. Oh, that movie, say, got, del- that movie up, got delayed up the wazoo. Even, so, New Mutants was on hiatus for so long, but Gambit just like, they, I feel like they forgot. And they, they went through the three paper. different directors in three different years. Like Doug Lyman, who, mm-hmm. do, who did Edge of Tomorrow, was lined up to do the Gambit movie. Like, that would have been cool. They they've they just went through so many directors and scripts, and then finally Disney bought Fox, and they're like, "We're not touching this." Uh, sorry, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> just dropped him. So he felt bad for uh, for Chain Tatum, but when it ultimately sh- he ultimately showed up in the movie, like Joyce, I like a sense of satisfaction filled my heart. I'm like, okay, this is Chain Tatum's Gambit. It's a different actor this time, though, compared to X Men Origins Wolverine. Let's see how it does. And I'm and I'm coming off of the high of X uh, X Men '97, so I'm like I know, I vaguely know things about Gambit. I saw X Men '97. He was great in X Men '97, and I think if that's the version of Gambit we're gonna get going forward with either Chain Tatum or a different actor playing in Gambit, I think this is good. He got that. Uh, it's not. It's a Louisiana accent. I forget what the technical name is uh, for the accent. Uh, 
But I think he, I think he acted out really well for that. (laughs) Yeah. Again, the dialect coach uh, joke that Deadpool makes. Like, who's your dialect coach? The minions. Yeah. So (laughs) it it, it reminded me of the movie Waterboy, where one of the coaches from uh, Southwest Louisiana State University or wherever it was was. Oh my! One of my old Creole country boys, (laughs) and he couldn't understand a word he said. It was all I know. I'm going down. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, no, no. It was like, what did you just say? Uh, But that 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 we I think it's called Creole X. I'm not sure. I'm probably screwing that up. But uh, I think uh, so. But it it, it's it was funny. I I I liked it. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, I loved seeing it. Um. So I wasn't big into like the comics or anything with Gambit. I didn't know much of the backstory, but um, I played a lot of X Men video games when I was younger, and Gambit was always my favorite character. So when I see him, I saw him, I knew instantly who it was, and I thought he played the part extremely mm-hmm. well. I thought he did yeah. great with it. Um, the way the CGI with the the cards and stuff as well um, was really well done, which mm-hmm. which kind of helps it. Um, but I thought he played the part really well and like kept it kept a serious face even though like we know we're joking on your voice right now. Um <laughs> yeah, I thought it was great. You can call me the gambit. You can call me the gambit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was great, man. <laughs> All right, Noah, what were your thoughts on Tatum being a gambit? I thought he did a good job. I liked what they did. They showed his combat stuff a lot better than in Origins. They showed oh, a yeah. little bit in oh, Origins. Yeah. Most of the time though, he was just he, he like the few attacks he did where he's like with his powers were what he um blew up the ground and then blew up that arch that was about to fall on Wolverine. Oh yeah, but, in like, Origins. Yeah. But that's about it. But I still think John Gambit Carter of Earth would have been a pretty good wo- Gambit. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a problem with him as an actor. Virginia. I thought he, I thought he was a good game. The, the, biggest, the biggest problem with him is that they, just the movies he was he's been casting haven't been great. But yeah, but as Gambit, I really liked it because they showed it off. His power was really good. They did a good job of that. I did, I also enjoyed his accent and not understanding it. <laughs> By the way, the fight sequence that he has at the end. Uh, for Gambit, I cannot see now going forward how you don't uh, do fighting that's not rated R, because the way he was popping fools and then he like places the cards and he's like and boom, mm-hmm. like blood splatter, like this des- like desecration of bodies disintegrating. I'm like, how are you supposed to show this in PG-13 form now? Because now this is in it's stuck in my head. Like this is the this is the, yeah. This is the, the expectations you've now set for me, like and especially after, and especially after watching X Men '97, how he takes down a big Godzilla, uh, Sentinel, uh, yeah, is that Sent- yeah Sentinel or Celestials? What is it? Is it Sentinel? Sentinels, yeah. He t- the way he took down that Godzilla Sentinel, I'm like. Uh, yeah, Gambit's that character. He's that good of a character, and I want to see more of him going forward. Uh, it was not a spoiler because they showed it in the last trailer uh, before the movie came out. We see the return of X-23 uh, appear on screen, Laura appear on screen. And much, uh, Daphne Keene is her uh, actress's name. Much needed for her especially coming off of The Acolyte, which she is in. So she was not the problem. Act. She was actually pretty good in that show. So to be able to bounce from one pe- press tour of that show, which was god-awful garbage, to now coming on to the high of Deadpool and Wolverine is a good look for her career. So, <laughs> so she definitely needed that in terms of getting away from Star Wars. But I think she, like the carryover, I don't know... This movie may seem like this is the same X-23 yeah. and the same X timeline. It, it, she didn't come across like a different version of X-23. She seemed like a much older version, which I did not mind at all. Uh, was, I, was I the only one thinking that? Or like you and me, Noe, we seem to agree on that. She does seem like the same one because she also said that her Logan died the exact mm-hmm. same way. 
and under the same circumstances, based on what she said, she's like, you helped uh, me and a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. Well, that could have been a whole bunch of other Logans as well. Yeah. That's true. Well, I think any Logan that becomes old man Logan in the, (laughs) in that, in the movie world probably ends up doing something similar. Yeah. What do we think of the inclusion of X-23, Dad and Keith? Oh, well, like. this is this is where uh, my unpopular take on the movie comes in because okay, uh, I didn't I understood it. I don't know that it added a lot of value introducing X twenty three in the in, in the only reason I can see that she, she adds value is to draw out uh, Hugh Jackman's character Wolverine this particular variant out in the movie. To explain why he's in a funk, and so my unpopular opinion is that Ryan Reynolds, ten out of ten in his movie, Hugh Jackman, I'd give him a six out of ten. I don't, I was not overly impressed with him as as not. He is the Wolverine. I'm just saying this, the writing, the script, his place in the movie, though valuable. Obviously, you couldn't have it without him, and the chemistry between he and Ryan Reynolds was great, but. I, his character didn't do it for me at all, um, and he was grumpy. And I know that's Wolverine. I got it. But I mean, come on, man. He didn't have hardly any funny, funny lines. Uh, not that he's a funny character, but he just didn't seem the same. He was just in a funk the entire movie, and I couldn't. I was waiting for him to come out of his shell a little bit, kind of like in the X Men, like in X, you know, the first one in X Two. You know, he kind of like started out grumpy, but they, you know, he said, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join the team and get in a fight." He just didn't, didn't seem to have that feel uh, for me in the movie. So, uh, X23, yeah, I could have done without her, but I understand why they needed her. Uh, but, but I, I don't know. They kind of that's when we were walking out. I told Noah that I think the second, towards the end of the second part of the movie, it's my wife. Hi. We're, we're live and the whole nation is oh. going to see you. Um, so, um, anyway, uh, God, I forgot my point now. Thanks a lot, Julie. Uh, what was I saying? Talking about X-23. Yeah, X-23. Uh, I didn't get her character. You know, I, I don't think it was all that great. To tell you the truth. I haven't been the biggest fan of X-23 just as a character in general. You didn't see Logan, though. I did. Oh, you did I see Logan? Oh, okay. I'm okay. talking about, like... He said he didn't like well. it. I, yeah, he said he didn't like Logan. Bit, I pref- like, I'm not a fan of her. I much prefer Wolverine 10 out of 10 times mm-hmm. if I'm given the choice between hit, being hit something about him or X-23. Yeah. No, I, I liked her, her character being in there. Um, I feel like she tried to pull some emotion out of Logan. Um, I guess yeah. that's where uh, I would differ from Jack's opinion on Logan. I think it was, the whole point was him being depressed this whole movie is that, like, he basically ruined his planet. So, like, say if you ruined your planet, you probably would never be happy. Uh, that's true. It's a that. different, yeah, it's yeah. a different variant. Well, I, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't really, uh, you're right, you're right he, 100% yeah. on that. But still, I don't think he the ruined character his was too funky. Planet. I just, I, I didn't get it. I don't think he ruined his planet because the whole thing was just that, because of him not wanting to commit to the X Men, they just ended up getting killed. But mm. cause remember, Wade finds him in a bar just drinking, and everyone seems mm. normal. So I think it's just mutant kind, probably stuff. Yeah, he got all the mutants anyway. killed. You know what I mean? Yeah. He got all of his friends killed, all his family. Um, but then, like from that, uh, y'all were saying, like, is she the same one? I don't know because she re- referenced Logan, but she didn't call him her father. Which in Logan, the end of the movie, she calls him dad. So I don't know if it's going to be the same variant or not. Um, okay. But I do think they did good. I think they could have done a little bit more, give her a little yeah. bit more of the story. I do think that for mm-hmm. sure. Because like, they bring yeah. her back at the end of the movie, not to skip forward too much, but they, they have her in the universe with Deadpool and stuff. Um, but I guess they could have gave her a little bit more of the story. I agree. Yeah. And then we get to... After battle sequence, after battle sequence, after battle sequence, we get to the introduction of the Deadpool core. <laughs> and Ladypool, Headpool, you name it, 
there's a Deadpool 2099 in there somewhere that we see. What did we think of all these different uh, Deadpools that showed up? And, oh, by the way, before we get to that, what did we did we catch the Ryan Reynolds jokes between him and Nice Pool? Oh my God! Just, uh, I love breaking the, the fourth wall. Yes, the proposal. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> what was the heck great. was that? Do you think you think that's what I do? <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's how it's done. Yeah, I know. I know. Dad really likes that joke. Yeah, and then the the Van Wilder jokes too. It was kind of funny too. It's like, oh, that's funny. I can break the, I can tap the fourth wall too. Mm-hmm. The proposal. <laughs> the proposal. Yeah, that, that scene was great and funny. And he's like, "Oh, you don't great heal. <laughs> you don't heal." <laughs> oh man, that was another laugh out loud moment. Yeah. He's holding him. He's, he's just, yeah. saying, he's just holding him there. It was so funny. My legs are paralyzed. <laughs> oh, he's talking man. to him. Purposefully just standing in the middle of the street while they keep on moving. It's so yeah, Deadpool, there. though. It's so Deadpool of him to do. Yeah. Oh, he just, he just wanted the dog. In terms of the other Deadpool, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Think- before, we, before we continue, we, <laughs> we don't have a red line when it comes to digging up graves, picking up each other, like picking apart the bones, using them as weapons, but we cross a red line about shooting dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's like that's off limits, along with cocaine. We do not kill dogs on screen. <laughs> yep. I forgot about the cocaine thing. That was funny. <laughs> all the names. Listing all the names. <laughs> all the names. Yeah, that was insane. But yeah, the, I think the the Deadpool Corp was done well. Um, I don't know yeah. if y'all know all the cameos that were in there. Matthew uh, McConaughey no. plays Cowboy Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the biggest one. I was like, wow, I did not know that. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Blake was was Lady Lady Deadpool, which is pretty cool. I'll um, say Lady Deadpool was, I think, overhyped because I I saw a lot of things with her picture on it, and I'm like, she mm-hmm. barely in the movie, and what she does, she's just like any of the other Deadpools, but she talks for like a few more lines. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. I there think a, Cowboy Deadpool a... was, or Head Headpool was more uh, prominent than she was. Headpool. Headpool. <laughs> Deadpool was hilarious. Oh, yeah. Wasn't there a baby Deadpool too? Yes, yes that's yep. their baby. That's their baby. That's their kid. Yeah, that's their, yeah. That's Ryan Reynolds' kid. Baby. That's Ryan and Blake's kid. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah, pretty cool. And right? Kidpool is their is their daughter. Yep. That's awesome. You think they should, you think they kept the suit? The baby. I Deadpool have to suit? imagine. Yeah, I yeah. have to imagine they keep the suits. The yeah, weird so yeah, on Halloween. I don't think I don't. I can't think what. Oh my god! If they both go out like trick or treating as Deadpool's, that's the fa- the Deadpool family. If they get a dog and they keep that Deadpool dog outfit, it'll be too perfect. Yeah. And then we get the reveal. Finally, we have the mask reveal of mm. finally the full costume with Wolverine and I will say off the t- off like yeah. off the top I was curious how they're going to do that with the full mask in the eyes they actually animate his face and the mask the same way they do with Deadpool if you watch closely mm-hmm. with eyebrow movement and eye movement with yeah. Deadpool, they apply that same technology, that same feel to the Wolverine mask. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. Yeah. Mask or no mask, gentlemen? D- what do we like? Oh, I liked it. I thought I it was really liked cool. it. I did. Well, it took me a minute, but I, I, I got into it because it was a little jarring at first. Because <laughs> I did not see it coming. Yeah. I'll be honest, I had forgotten that that outfit had a mask. <laughs> <laughs> At least the ears yeah. weren't pointy. They weren't. Su- they're not super pointy. The handlebars yeah. as that for that particular <laughs> joke, which I will not. I will not say the rest of that joke on this video. <laughs> uh, I thought I mean, of all the CGI that happened in this in this uh, movie, I thought that fight sequence creative of how they approached it of like left and right movement 
with the camera and the fighting. I thought yeah. the CGI could have been cleaned up a bit when they're just all approaching him and then you have the pile of dead pools trying to push them back. Uh, I thought that between the Honda Odyssey and the, and the city bus just got totally abused with blood and slashing and killing in this movie. I love how uh, Cowboy Deadpool tries to run away. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tries to escape through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder yeah. which... Did which anyone catch the Stan Lee cameo in this movie? Yeah. Uh-uh. It's, this, it's the sign on the side of the bus as they're killing Deadpool's. I, saw, I know it's you that. See, you see his sign. You see, like, I forget what the name of it, the company it is. It's like a taxi company. With Stan okay. Lee smiling on it. Oh, that's okay. cool. Yeah. That's cool. I remember that. That that scene was kind of like video game esque, like the the yeah. way it was like portrayed, yeah. like the side scrolling kind of thing. See, that would have been the other than the Halo. I think giving like the Stan Lee cameos that we've had, he would have, if he were alive, he probably could have had a second one. And it would have been during that bus scene. He would have been outside the bus with probably headphones on or something advertising his thing. Because that happened in the second, uh, in the Amazing Spider-Man uh, 1. It's like fighting around him and he can't hear it and it's narrowly staying alive. Yeah. And then we get the ending of how they just... What do we think about the ending of this movie uh, between Deadpool and Wolverine <laughs> being the merger, the conduit that destroys the Time Ripper? So my question were we, were is, we not, were we not in all of Hugh Jackman's abs <laughs> when that happened? <laughs> yeah, my thing is after thinking about it after after the movie, I'm like. Why couldn't they have just blown it up? That was the only way to well, blow it what up. What were they going to blow it up with? Mm -hmm. well, I'm sh well, first of all, there's claws uh, involved. <laughs> there's uh, Adam Antium swords involved. Uh, there's. No, I'm sure they could have come up with some sort of dynamite in this movie. Uh, it just didn't... They did it for effect. I got it, and I enjoyed it. It's just... Mm -hmm. It seemed to me that there was other ways to destroy what they what they had to join hands at, acting as a conduit to to destroy. I I, I didn't get that specific part. Well, because to, in order to eliminate both of them, uh, one was MAGA, the other is anti MAGA. You can't technically destroy MAGA with MAGA because you can't like because of physics. The only thing that can is anti MAGA. They annihilate each other, and the reason you couldn't stab anti MAGA with anything is because it would have completely obliterated whatever stabbed it for if it left it in there long enough yeah. okay. yeah, I'll, buy that. I'll buy that i'll buy that i i like the ending um the only thing it kind of confused me because they were saying that they uh they would just literally be nothing they would vaporize yeah, yeah. so like well, they, how are they, they both they okay assume, <laughs> they were assuming probably that only one person was gonna do it yeah but still that should i don't think that should have mattered um when they did the the shirtless thing, I thought that was hilarious. I thought, <laughs> I thought that was funny. Dude did look good, and uh, um, and, it's, and it's, it was even funnier because Deadpool made the joke earlier, like he was letting himself go since the divorce, which is like a real life joke. Yes, Corey, with Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman got. Oh yeah. my goodness! Um, so he got divorced. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, and they just made before the, joke the, movie in the movie came about out. it. Oh, yeah, man. funny, man, funny. Um, but yeah, I like the end scene. The only thing, like I said, just didn't. The way he was marketing is like they were gonna evaporate into thin air, and then both of them walk out like not even hurt, not limping, nothing. Yeah. I um, think that I think the reason for that is because it uh, each one of them only took half of the uh, uh, thing. Like Deadpool got the ma all the matter, Hugh Jackman got the anti matter, and their healing factors were just enough combined to deal with half each. Okay. I can buy that because I mean, he, when he went up against the Phoenix, you know, he was like disintegrating in front of our eyes. Yeah, he that's true. He, he ended up, you know, annihilating her. Um, so yeah, he's 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 got the strength and the power to do that. So yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, and then to end this mm -hmm. overview of the movie, we are dragged back 
to that fateful scene with Johnny and <laughs> that conversation being recorded. What did we think of the post credit scene? I thought, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was funny. It's a perfect way to end the movie. Like, give us something. Like, not they didn't use it as like typical Marvel. Like, all right, look what's coming up. It was more of like, here, here's something that happened in this movie that's funny, and we're gonna answer this question that was left. Uh, did he actually say it? Um, I thought it was a good way to end the Deadpool movie. All right, Noah, what did you think about the post credits? Uh, like I said, I I thought I thought it was funny. I, I agree with a lot of what Keith said. I wasn't expecting anything like super big because I don't know what else you could really do out because the last big thing that they had was um, at the end of the first Deadpool movie saying that Cable was going to be in the next one. I wasn't expecting anything like that. So, hmm. What about you, Dan? What was the post credit scene like for you? I liked it unexpected. I was, what I was expecting was something to deal with I think it was Venom's post credit scene <laughs> from the second movie that it would tie into that somehow, but it never did. At least not that I was aware. Um, I was expecting something like that. I, also, thought, I thought it was the, the funny. The, I thought it was the funniest thing that they could have done just to clear Deadpool's name, because if you don't have that post credit scene, Going forward, in any other movie he pops up, you don't trust a word that comes out of his mouth. Like if you get a gra- like if you get a rat tat team of Avengers, like Spider Man, Miss Marvel, Doctor Strange, and Deadpool all wound up chained together, and Deadpool starts talking, you're gonna think, oh, he's making this stuff up. He's gonna yep. rat them out for false lies, <laughs> for stuff they didn't say. Exactly. So, th- so like, thankfully, they went back, and he went back and says, "Like I am tired of this fake news of I got Johnny killed." <laughs> Here's him actually say this, and then some, and then some. So, also, Deadpool did him a favor for not saying the entire thing about him peeing on the corpse that he mm-hmm. would destroy Cassandra with. <laughs> yep. Also, one thing uh, that this post facing uh, gave us was Chris Evans, who's been the Boy Scout in Marvel. Cursing up a storm, basically. Yeah, true. The first time on good Campbell. point. Good Johnny point. Storm was never a Boy Scout in no, the original but he's movie. About I said Chris the Evans. character, Chris Evans. That's mm-hmm. what we. That's that's our how our mind works. Yeah. And he he, well, even, he know, brought off some cuss Johnny, words in Endgame. The Johnny Storm that we've seen him play was like a was a very was always childish. He wasn't yeah. crude. Yeah. It's very so, true. I agree. To yeah. see him say all that stuff. So yeah. mad and fact, it's like, okay, in a Mad Max setting, basically. Mm-hmm. That's what the void does to you, man. It just it screws you up. <laughs> what happened to the other three, though? I want to know what happened to them. To what? See, the other three of the four. Because he would get it. What were the other three? Well, they they, well he rattled off Reed right? Richards telling him of what the void was. So they name dropped that, Reed Richards. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, did, we didn't need it. We didn't mm-hmm. need to see the other three, honestly. We didn't. Yeah. You know what I was kind of sad about is that they showed him, but they didn't reference the crappy Fantastic Four movie, Fan Forced It. <laughs> they showed that, that movie in the monta- awesome. in the Fox montage. They yeah, weren't? but they didn't address it like they did yeah. everything else in the movie. But they didn't need to. I mean, what, what part of it needed to be addressed? That they were crappy. Did they say the X Men I mean, movies they, were crappy? They addressed everything else. They addressed how crappy the DC films were, and then mm-hmm. they addressed how uh, you know. I mean, just you, you look at it every year. You're talking about you, you're, you're you got divorced. That's that's kind of crappy. They addressed yeah. that. They addressed you know a whole bunch of other. Oh, stuff. you're talking fourth talk wall break. You're talking how bad fourth wall break. The Fantastic yeah. Four movies were. I didn't think you need to. I honestly didn't think you need to. And you can honestly go forward and say. Hey, those Fantastic Four, like the original Fantastic Four movies, took place in the same universe. Like, you could honestly just go forward and just say that and just not worry about it going forward. Well, he didn't say anything about the Green Lantern either, so I guess there's a little. He addressed that in the very first First Deadpool. movie, yeah. He didn't, he didn't really rehash yeah, it. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so they're all Gert. I mean, and you got James Gunn over at DC, so 
I'm sure there's going to be swipes going back and forth now between Oh yeah. between uh Marvel and DC. It's it's not going to end with this. It's going to it's going to continue. Mm-hmm. So you got that going forward. All right, uh that's a lot of stuff that we liked about it. So, just so we before we sign off, what's one thing we what's mm. a few things we did not like about this movie? Dad mentioned uh X23 uh, was there anything else that stood out that you didn't like about the movie? I didn't like about the movie. I think the second act was a little too long. It kind of started to drag a little bit after they got into the void. That whole conversation with uh, what's her name, uh, Xavier's twin, or whatever. Cassandra. I think that whole conversation there was it dragged on. Uh, I think after Blade and. And, and Gambit and Electra were introduced, and then X-23, that scene after that kind of dragged on. I just think the second act could have been, I don't know, That's I mean, it's nitpicky. It really is, but I think that could have been a little bit shorter. Uh, but I don't, I, that, like I said, that's nitpicky. I, I, I didn't find too much about this movie that I didn't necessarily like, other than there was a lot of cussing uh, that <laughs> that I think they could have toned down a little bit. I mean, yeah. seriously, um, be- because it seemed a little lazy in writing after a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's 120 f bombs apparently. <laughs> yeah, 120. Yeah, they counted them. Um, you want me to go ahead and my, do my one thing? Sure. See if y'all. So mine, uh, they kind of kept repeating the Marvel Jesus thing, and I didn't know how to take that. <laughs> that was my my my. One yeah, I thing forgot that about I was that. Like, that I was just like, all right, they brought bring it up once. It was funny, but like they ke- he kept saying it, and I just didn't know if he was like joking, yeah, or you know, that pushing that pushing thing. that button a little bit, pushing the button, man. Especially mm-hmm. in the world nowadays, you know. So I was just like, where are you, you think this you one? think the context just, of this I movie? They're Josh. they're well aware that this movie is coming off of the Marvels. They're well aware. That going into this movie, not a lot of folks are very high on Marvel right now, and a lot of folks are reviewing this movie as the launch point, like to a soft reinvigoration Reset. of this MCU. And that was another uh, joke with Wolverine when he wakes up from his drunkenness, like, "Well, welcome to the MCU, by the way. Mm. You're coming in at a bit of a low point right now." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to to Keith's point is 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 I understand the the reasoning behind what he said in that in that line, but mm-hmm. yeah, he said it like four times if I'm yeah. not mistaken, and yeah. one time I think is all, all that needed, and you could say needed. stuff like I'm the savior of this universe or mm-hmm. something, but not necessarily yeah. the, you know, the, the the Marvel Jesus. I mean, it's I had a, I used to I used to in the Navy I had a uh, uh, command master chief who who, who said he was. Uh, uh, the 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 black Jesus of of the command because he would go into commands and like solve problems and mm. you know heal wounds and all that kind of stuff of the, anything that was wrong uh, you know which was kind of funny but uh, you know sometimes you, if you if you take it to a certain extent it it, it can get to a point of you know, uh, you you, cro- you could be crossing a line yeah yeah for me I was talking about this actually to Josh before we before you guys joined. There's a series of people on TikTok who are like Christian TikTokers slash YouTubers who are, and some of them are, they're upset or some of them are just crying, staring at the camera with the text, my God will not be mocked. And I look at them and I go, you're out of your mind if you're making those because it, it's not. It and it's Deadpool. Be, it, it's Deadpool. It, it's not it's like Deadpool for you one, take this so character seriously. You can't get, if you're going into Deadpool expecting to uh, and then you got offended by something, and you found that they went too far. You were watching the wrong movie. Yeah. And secondly, I I believe he was joking. I know he doesn't think he's actually Jesus. Also, you can't get mad at like this for bashing God or Jesus. One, because it's therefore, but two, it takes place in a universe where there is no actual Judeo-Christian God that exists. Well, that's not true. That's not true. He is the only one, and he's not even the strongest. So you can't say that it's like heresy or anything. It's like if you watch and enjoy Marvel comics, anything, then that's technically heresy. 
because it's in a world that he doesn't exist. Well, I can tell you right now, Noah, like any, like, this is, I mean, they make these movies, like, yes, they're fictional movies. They're not, they're not nonfiction movies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're not nonfiction movies. They're fictional movies, but they make them in a way where, yes, it's fiction. Yes, there's some things they take the liberties. Yes, there's some things you got to turn your brain off with it, but they don't make these movies, like, disregarding religion and all that stuff. Like, they don't disregard... Hey, God doesn't exist here. Christians and Muslims and Jews don't exist here in this world. No, they do. It's it's just not what the movie's about. It's well, just yeah, the, it's just also, there in the background. My my thing is that if you're going to a Deadpool movie, you have the same mindset as if you're going to like a Dave Chappelle uh, show live. You cannot. You have to immediately suspend uh, how you would feel. Like you have to stop yourself from getting like. Uh, not triggered. What is the word? Offended. 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 Thank yeah, you. you gotta you gotta build that. You gotta have that offend blocker. You basically, sure. have, yeah. You yeah, can't he, be he, upset. You can't be upset at him or the movie yeah. for doing something that you knew was likely to happen. Well, I mean, that's why we watch movies. That's why we watch sports or whatever. We it get is away from it. Game. Yeah. You know, we don't want to be preached to. We don't need politics. Yeah. We don't need yeah. you know anything inserted. Just. Do your thing and let us enjoy it, you yeah. know. So, well, gentlemen, you are now officially part of the first ever stream to my stream being taken down to a community guideline strike. <laughs> so, congratulations on that. But this thing <laughs> is a backup recording, and I'm going to re upload this, down? and I'm going to re upload this and take out whatever they wanted, uh, that whatever it got taken down for. My guess is it's the three scenes that I have in there. But they were put uh, from YouTube. It wasn't like I had a hard disk that Kevin Feige sent to my front door on a hard drive and like I uploaded YouTube. them. YouTube is very... Yeah, uh, it was... YouTube will tell you. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Like, you can, you can cover something that was on the news. You show a mm -hmm. clip of the news. But if it's something that would technically be TOS, they'll cancel you. Yep. But uh, that same news footage that you just pulled that was on YouTube, they leave up because it's news it could also be the the graphic of the um chris evans getting his skin yeah off. that yeah that I and mean, that's that the actual scene yeah. yeah that was playing that yeah. probably could have done it bro i think i think you could remove, you okay then remove. we need to go after this youtuber that has that video posted then that i grabbed it from true well, so I don't, know, but I don't know who knows because again i at like like you can't see it now but in the video and i'll cover it up but yeah, I put on there, like, on to the left, it says, rights go to Marvel Studios slash Disney. To the right, it says, you, cut, video came from YouTube channel at so-and-so, <laughs> so-and-so. Yeah. So, Well, do they tell you why they took it down? No, it just says a community guideline strike, and I just filled out the seven questionnaire. The It's a warning. It's a it's not yeah, a strike yeah, yeah. strike, so the warning goes away on October 29th. So I'm still, be, I'm still able to do live streams, so... Don't worry yeah. for upcoming football season. Oh. Don't worry about okay. that. <laughs> so, which uh, wow. I will touch up on uh, this right here, Keith. Uh, how much confidence you got in your Eagles going forward? How much confidence <laughs> you got in your team? Uh, you trust your new coordinators? What, I have in my team? what do you say? You trust your what new coordinators? We, me and Dad have in our team. Oh, I don't, I don't trust. I don't trust coordinators now. <laughs> No. I trust our team. I think we have the athletes in place. Um, I still think our team goes as Jalen Hurts goes, which is still a uh, question, in my opinion. Can he throw the ball consistently? Um, and we also don't have a captain on the line this year. So we're we're missing that factor. So we'll see how that goes. If he can't be protected and he's just running all the time, is he going to last the whole season? Mm -hmm. There's another thing there. So there's a, there's a lot of questions. I think our defense is going to be a little bit better. Our, our offense is going to be about the same. Uh, we didn't add, like, any extravagant piece. Um, well, yeah, we did. Uh, Saquon Barkley. But um, <laughs> just a little piece. Yeah, but <laughs> is he going to get hurt, you know? Has he been a fully healthy season, season in a while, really? Um, mm -hmm. Especially as much as he's going to carry it with us. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll I, see. I, I, I have us making the playoffs. Do I see us going any farther than that? Don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Nope. <laughs> and that will do it for today's 
quasi stream. It will be uploaded <laughs> later tonight. It'll be posted tomorrow after I do the edits of this Deadpool <laughs> and Wolverine spoiler filled discussion. And I will know what not to do going forward, apparently, when it comes to movie reviews. So with that said, I will uh, we will sign off and I will kick it back to you. Uh, this is Noah at the top left. That's my dad, Jack Michael, top right. And my future bar- brother-in-law, Keith, at the bottom of your screen. And I'm sorry, Keith, uh, when we go back to watch this, uh, like like your ch- like from the chin down, like you had the lower third blocking some of your face. So I apologize <laughs> for that. So it's all good. You'll have like a uh, Mike Wazowski moment right there for you. That's, we have like a lower third hilarious. over you. <laughs> you should edit it and put the Mike Wazowski thing in. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is uh, Joshua Mickle signing off. And as always, keep kicking it to the king.